Check it out, KC-46. I'm not flying on it this time, but it's the first time uh, that I've been up close with one of these things. My name is uh, Seth Thomas, S-E-T-H-T-H-O-M-A-S. Um, I'm Chief Master Sergeant, the Senior Enlisted Leader for the 931st Maintenance Group. Um, today we're on board a KC-46, and this is the flight deck um, of, the, of the KC-46. And as you can see, it's fairly modern with, uh, um, with what you would be considered calling in a glass cockpit. But again, this is from the factory. KC-46s are relatively new uh, in the global air refueling uh, tanker fleet. You had to see the pilot, co-pilot, uh, and we have a couple of our observer seats up front here. Airplane is currently undergoing some maintenance so that you can see some of our, our warning tags and stuff on different systems that we're troubleshooting and that sometimes we don't want these systems moved or turned on. And one of the uh, um, lockout, tagout type procedures that we have as maintainers are these warning tags. So one side is here on the part and there's another set that's inside our aircraft forms that, uh, that we review. Uh, prior to doing any kind of maintenance and our kind of our overall maintenance history uh, the other side of this tag is in those in those forms so they're hanging here a lot of troubleshooting going with this airplane and what we're doing today this, this these positions here are called the uh, uh, air refueling operator station also known as the aero station uh, this is where the boom operator sets and does our uh, refueling when we do uh, globe, uh, when we do aerial refueling there's a the boom operator and a instructor boom operator both are capable of flying the boom and controlling the boom from either station um, this is done in a uh, uh, through the use of cameras uh, different and particularly different than the KC-135 this is more uh, where it's done by the use of cameras and the, the boom operator is looking at a screen that's actually in 3d he wears 3d glasses that are uh, attached right here so he puts these 3D glasses on that go in this container and looks at the screen and the image um, that comes up here. And this is how he does the air refueling with the, the receiver airplane. Moving back is just more crew seats uh, where, we can, where we can bring a limited amount of, uh, of passengers or mission essential personnel like our ground crew, our, our maintainers, our flying crew chiefs. And some of the things that we store and keep. Um, here you have a galley, which is nice. Very different than a 135, where we have some refrigeration is there a, is and there coffee, coffee maker. maker. Yeah, we got those crew yeah. chiefs and maintainers gonna have our coffee to stay away. More crew quarters here. More crew quarters. We also keep some of our equipment, um, like our ladders, and we also keep litters for, um, you know, for for in the times that we may need to do an aeromedical. Uh, evacuation type mission where we have patients that may be on litters. Uh, think about the old style uh, where folks come out to a field and grab you and put you on a, a, a cot looking litter type thing. We keep some of those in the airplane as well. Just in case. Just in case. Then we have uh, our, our, our crew bunks here. A lot of times this is where our flying maintainers and our crew chiefs uh, get their necessary crew rest. Uh, we're here before the pilots get here doing our pre-flights and making sure the airplane's ready to go. And then when we land at a particular place, maintainers have got to get back to work. So this is our crew rest right here. Gotcha. The airplane is also configured not just for uh, air refueling, but for hauling cargo. This airplane is also an FAA certified airframe. And we meet all parts of part 121 for uh, operations for the FAA. And a lot of what you see here is some uh, equipment necessary. So the smoke, what we call a smoke barrier and a 9G barrier. This, when we're call, when we're when we can carry combo nation of uh, of people and uh, cargo, we can make sure that we keep the crew safe from runaway pallets with the use of this net, uh, making sure that things are secured. And then also this barrier uh, is is a, what we call smoke barrier to prevent any fumes or vapors 
traveling forward to the crew compartment. Okay. To, again, it's to separate people and cargo. Gotcha. This airplane here uh, is capable of holding 18 pallets in a side-by-side. -side. This is a 767 wide-body airplane. And so we can do uh, pallets in side-by-side uh, -side pallets, or we can do 10 pallets down the middle. We have rollers that stay in the floor. And again, all of this is for the movement of cargo. All of our tanks, if you will, that hold the fuel for our air refueling are below us in uh, tanks that are stored in the lower lobe of the airplane. So below us is another layer, another section of, uh, of the airplane that holds our tanks gotcha. for, for, for carrying gas. Just more of the cargo compartment here as we move our way backwards. Lots of connections and spaces where we can, again, we can roll on whatever type of mission that we're trying to do here, whether that be hauling cargo, whether that be doing air refueling, or maybe we got to haul passengers and people. We can bring uh, pallets of seats and we can move troops. We can also do, uh, again, one of our big missions that we do as well is aeromedical evacuation. And uh, back here is more where we can haul patients and all of the, the staff that comes with it, with our nurses and, and the, uh, the air crew uh, and the medical staff that come along with an aeromed. Uh, again, more equipment that's stored here for the purposes of air medical evacuation. Some of our equipment that we use to plug the engines. And then back towards the back of the airplane is two more doors um, for, uh, you know, egress and getting off the airplane, also getting on the airplane. That's about the, the point where we would be at the, and that's the, back the boom of the pod where the boom Again, on a KC physically lays down in the back of the airplane and does uh, air refueling. Again, KC-46, that's done up front. You know any guys that did booms for 135 that transitioned to yes. KC-46? Yes, So again... Do they like the 46 more as a boom operator? I think their opinions vary. Yeah. Uh, this is more... Um, this is more technologically advanced. Um, you know, it's probably easier on the boom operator. Um, in both a physiological type environment, you know, it's it's more comfortable it's sitting. Much up there. more comfortable, that's yeah. for sure. And then trying to navigate and lay down, and it's it's hot and cold in, in the back of a KC-135. But uh, I think uh, from a from a technology and new airplane stance, they probably like it. But the other boom is probably more hands-on. You can yeah. feel uh, you can feel it moving. You can do those types of things. Whereas this one's more uh, it, it, it's set up more to run off cameras and and do it more visually through remote system, as opposed to laying down the back of the boom and physically looking at it with your eyes. Gotcha. What we got up here, this is just more stuff for support. That's correct, more stuff for um, uh, our, our medical evacuation stuff and different ways that they uh, hold equipment and things. We do uh, almost what's called organic airlift. We can load up, we can load up in the KC-46 and we can deploy anywhere in the world. We can bring our maintainers, we can bring all the parts, pieces, that we need to set up a forward operating base wherever that may be in the world. We can do that right here with the KC-46. And a lot of times if we're going and, and, and uh, dragging fighters or, or air refueling fighters that may be going to the fight, we will fly to there, pick up their maintainers, pick up their pieces and parts and equipment, put them on this airplane, and then uh, ferry their fighters to their forward location. And one thing that you had mentioned uh, to me a little while ago was that the airmen here at uh, McConnell are right, writing the book on maintenance of the KC-46. That, that's right. Our initial cadre of KC-46 maintainers, uh, again, with McConnell being main operating base number one, a lot of the things, the, the books, the technical orders, those are written by our airmen here. Yes, Boeing has a maintenance plan, and we translated those from the maintenance manuals that they have into the technical orders that the Air Force uses. So a lot of the tools, the test equipment, the um, guidance that we use to do aircraft maintenance was done on the backs of our airmen here at McConnell Air Force Base. That's awesome.